After the latest news, Rocksteady might actually have the next big hit in gaming. Am I hallucinating? What it do, Durag Nation? I'm back with Super News, bringing you the latest superhero news without wasting your time if you subscribe. So if this information was valuable, hit the like button so it will reach more people. But if it wasn't for you, change it to a dislike. Ever since its delay last February, due in part to backlash that came from a leaked image of a battle pass, Rocksteady has been quietly turning the Suicide Squad game into arguably the best game of the genre we've seen in years, at least on paper. With every new reveal and with actually allowing fans to try the game for themselves, Sells for free last year with the closed alpha, momentum has been moving in a positive direction for the game overall, especially after insider Miller Ross proved those story leaks were fake, which has contributed to Suicide Squad being the most pre-ordered game on PlayStation, despite the heavy competition. Now with the latest Q&A, Rocksteady seems to have won pretty much everyone over, with the exception of the fans with Arkham Knight tattoos on their lower back. Even Kotaku couldn't think of anything negative to say. One of the biggest complaints about Suicide squad was that it was live service and while most gamers don't know what that actually means they know some of the things that come with it like loot boxes and pay to win nonsense well rocksteady has revealed the most player friendly live service model on the market not only is everything you see on this huge roadmap free they just confirmed the battle pass will not have any fomo that's right similar to the model rolled out in halo infinite you no longer have to stress about grinding the battle pass and missing out on items or not being able to play a season. All the content delivered in the seasons on the Suicide Squad game can be played again to get the rewards and they never expire and won't get pulled. This applies to both the battle pass and the seasonal gear. So if you don't start playing the game until season 4, you can still get everything on the battle passes from season 1 to 3. Seasons will also be released frequently. Starting with season 1's Joker DLC in early March, each season will be divided into two episodes, lasting six weeks each. They described one episode as as not only consisting of new high-end gear to chase, but more than 12 new missions. Plus, Season 1 also kicks off with the Joker as a playable character and a new Elseworld map. So Suicide Squad will be essentially adding some new form of content around every month, with major content drops happening every three months for the rest of this year, which ends with Season 4. After the Q&A, we saw a huge uptick in people won over by Suicide Squad, who used to be skeptical, including prominent creators like Moxie, who was specifically impressed by the insanely detailed system of gear customization and quality of life features, such as being able to progress through the stories with your friends and the new game plus, which will be available from launch. Not only will you be able to replay any part of the game, beating the campaign unlocks new difficulty levels above hard, and completing missions on those higher levels unlocks unique gear, so you have an actual reason to replay the story content beyond simply wanting to relive it with all your skills unlocked. Former Avengers players will also appreciate that Suicide Squad has joined in progress, so you can join in on a friend's game at nearly any point, and they can do the same to you. If you want random people to be able to join as well, you can set your privacy to open. Rocksteady even thought of the lonely single players. You can not only set your sessions to private so nobody can join in, all of the content can be played solo. Not just story stuff, even the end game missions can be done with just you and the AI. But if you want to pretend like you have other people on your team without having to actually deal with them as humans, you can go to the leaderboard and pull in somebody's character build and have them be controlled by AI. This will also earn them rewards, so it's a win-win. Rocksteady has really thought of everything. On paper, this is the most complete complete looter shooter at launch of all time. The question now is, how will the servers and the performance hold up when the game releases in early access next week? Fans still on the fence will have to wait to see people play it on the 30th, 29th for people on vacation in New Zealand because review copies are not being sent out early, reportedly because these servers won't be on yet. This can be a bit of a cursed genre, so it's very possible things could go horribly wrong. But if they don't, then Rocksteady has just made arguably the best looter shooter ever with the most player-friendly live service model in the world. If Suicide Squad becomes a hit, then when you consider everything else coming in 2024, this could be an insane year for fans of superhero games, especially if you love DC. I'll talk about that in the next video on screen.